there is something interesting that happens only in case of right triangles. Suppose we have a right triangle, ABC, where there is a right angle at C. And now we take the side opposite this point. That's what we call the hypotenuse. So we take the hypotenuse and we draw the height belonging to the hypotenuse. That's this line. I mean, say this is point D. And then something interesting happens. Before we put in this line, if I tell you that this angle is 20 degrees, that should tell you what this angle is, right? Because we have 90 plus 20 is 110, and to make the sum 180, this has to be 70. So if this is 20, this is 70. If this is 10 degrees, this must be 80 degrees. In short, the angles at points A and B must add to 90 degrees I'm going to call the angle at point A alpha and the angle at point B beta. And we can, we can say that alpha and beta add up to 90 degrees. Actually, there is an expression for that. If two angles add up to 90 degrees, they are called complements. Okay. If you think about it, the fact that the two smaller angles are complements only happens in a right triangle because if the two smaller angles are 90, that forces the third angle 90 because of the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, right? Okay, so this is the start. And then when we draw in this height belonging to the hypotenuse, two things happen. We split this big triangle into two small triangles where even though we destroyed this right angle, we recreated one here. And now let's look at just this triangle here. If this angle at point D is 90 and this is alpha, then this angle here has to be the one that if we add to 90 and alpha, we get 180. That means that has to be the same angle as what we have here. And similarly, if we look at this part, then we have a right angle here at point D. We have the original angle, one of them, and that forces the other newly created angle to be the other original angle. And now it kind of shows up what it looks like when two angles are complements. When you pile them up on the top of each other, they form a 90 degree angle. Only right triangles do that, that the height drawn to the hypotenuse splits the triangle into two right triangles similar to each other and to the original triangle. This is a little accident only in case of right triangles. And so this similarity is gonna enable us to solve for all kinds of sides. Uh, here would be the first example. So we have a right triangle where we drew in the altitude belonging to the hypotenuse. And two sides of the triangle are given and we are asked to find this altitude and X and Y, which is the two line segments into which this altitude splits the hypotenuse into. All right, it's much easier to talk about geometrical figures if we label things. So just for us to be able to discuss things, let's just label things. Okay, I'm gonna mark the smaller, distinctly smaller angle with the red, that would be alpha. The right angle is very visible and then the unmarked angle is clearly the bigger one that we call beta. This angle is alpha. So one advice that I have for you is, unless the problem specifically states, stay away from, from pictures like this. In a picture like this, when it's, uh, it looks isosceles or, or almost isosceles, you're gonna have a hard time telling which is the smaller angle, which is the larger angle. And that's much easier in case of a picture like that. So if anything, even further distort things, you're giving yourself the visual clue to see which angle is which. Because you see, there are three triangles, the original ABC, this cute little triangle, CDB, and this bigger triangle here, CAD. And they are, they are similar and, and therefore the sides are proportional, but they're all twisted and turned. So it's kind of difficult to tell what side belongs to what. For example, this line segment labeled Z is the shortest side in, in triangle ADC, but it is the second shortest side in this other triangle BDC. So there, 
even though it's z and z, they're not corresponding to each other. So we have to solve for x, y, and z given this scenario. But the first thing that I, I notice is that we have two sides of a right triangle given. That means we can easily find the third side. By the Pythagorean theorem, side AC has to be the square root of 169 squared minus 65 squared, which is square root of 24,336 is 156. Now that is very good news because we have the original triangle of which we know all the three sides. And that's a very good thing to have. We can easily solve for, for the sides using ratios, but they're all twisted and turned. So one thing you can do to make your life easier is to, to redraw them sort of aligned. What if we would copy these three triangles, the smallest one, which is DBC, and then the second smallest one, which is ADC, and then the original, but we would copy these three triangles sort of aligned, and that way the corresponding sides would be parallel, and it's much easier to recognize and use proportional sides. Let's start with, actually I like to start with this one, because if you notice, this one is gonna be very easy, it's just a matter of copying. So the middle triangle, I would, I would say start with the angles, oh, even though this one is easy. In this second biggest triangle, at the red angle there is A, at the right angle there is D, and the third point, is C. And once you have the angles and then you have the points, now we can have the sides. So here, AD, that side is labeled Y. The side connecting D and C is labeled Z. And the hypotenuse in this triangle is 156 units. Okay. Now let's go for the smallest one. So that's this cute little triangle DBC. So my recommendation is let's go first for the angles, then the points, then the sides. So for the angles, the, the right angle is at point D. So here is the right angle, here is point D. Now the skinniest, the red angle, is at point C. And, and the third angle, the one that's unmarked but not right in, the, in this small triangle is at point B. So we have triangle DBC, DBC, so, so far so good. And now that they have the angles and the points, the line segments can be found by using the points. So for example, this side is BD. Well, BD is labeled X. Then this side, CD, CD is labeled Z. And the hypotenuse in this little triangle is labeled 65. Now, if you, if you look at what we have already, it's not very promising because each triangle has two unknowns and they're all different, right? This one has X and Z missing. This one has Y and Z missing. So it looks hopeless. Of course, I left the best triangle for last because in the big triangle, we know everything. So again, let's start with, based on the angles, let's start with the points. So in the original big triangle, the red angle is at point A, the right angle is at point C, and the unmarked non-right angle is at point B. And now that we have the points, this horizontal side is AC. In the original, AC is 156. This side labeled BC, BC in the original triangle is labeled 65, and AB, the hypotenuse, is 169. If it makes us feel better, you can color the other angle too. The one that I call the unmarked, you can make them blue or something like that. Okay, so now let's look at this. And now it's very, very promising because if you wanna find out X, look at these two and these two. Three of them are a number, one unknown. That means we can solve for X uh, here. So 65 over X should be the same as 169 over 65. So let's actually compute that. So we are going for X here. 65 over X, or better yet, let's not get X into the denominator. How about X over 65 is 65 over 169. So X over 65 is the same. X over 65 is the same as 65 over 169. If this visual clue is not enough for you, there is another good way to find this ratio. Just describe it. So in the little triangle, X is opposite the red angle. And the other number that we're using is the hypotenuse. That's opposite the right angle, right? So if we write it down, then we just have to reproduce this ratio. Opposite the red angle is X, the hypotenuse is 
is 65. And then in the big triangle, the same ratio, opposite the red angle is 65. Opposite the right angle, which is the hypotenuse, is 169. So either way, we'll get there. And now, when we multiply both sides by 65, we get that x is 65 over 169 times 65. We can use the calculator, but I happen to know that 169 is 13 squared, and that 65 is 13 times 5. So we can cancel out 13 from here, and we get 5 over 13 times 65. And 65 is still 5 times 13, so we can cancel out another 13 from here. And so we left it 5 times 5 over 1, which is 25. Suppose we're going to get y. If we want to get y, first we need to find it. Where is y? There it is. If y is in this triangle only, and it looks like that's the case, we don't want to use this side. Let's use the side that is labeled by y and the hypotenuse, because we know the hypotenuse in this triangle, and then the same ratio in the original triangle is going to be like this. So just in case the visual clue is not enough, we can write down this ratio as, so we want to say y over 156. y is opposite the unmarked angle. So opposite, I'm just going to call it beta, divided by the hypotenuse. In the second triangle, this ratio is y over 156. And the same ratio in the big original triangle, well, opposite beta is 156, and the hypotenuse is 169. So opposite beta is 156, and the hypotenuse is 169. We can solve for y by multiplying both sides by 156. And just on a hunch, let's divide 156 by 13, because as it turns out, it's divisible. It's 12 times 13. So we can take a 13 from the denominator and cancel out in 156, and then we get 12 times 156 divided by 13. And then we can go again and cancel out 13 from the second factor, and we get 12 times 12 over 1, which is 140. The last unknown that we need to find is z. Because we already know x, we can just simply use the Pythagorean theorem in this smallest little triangle and find z. But just for practice, let us use a ratio problem. We actually have two ratios from choose for, between z and 65 and between z and 156, because z, z appears in two triangles. Well, let's just go with this little, what this little triangle has to offer. So what ratio are we taking? So let's say we want to write z over 65. So that is, z is opposite beta, and we divide it by 65, where 65 in this cute little triangle is actually the hypotenuse. And the same ratio in the big triangle, opposite beta is 156, and the hypotenuse is 169. And so we can get z by multiplying both sides by 65, this is another way of canceling out things. We rewrote 169 as 13 times 13 and 65 as 13 times 5. This way we don't have to write in little numbers, we just knock out what's common. So now we have 156 divided by 13 times 5. But if you recall, 156 was 13 times 12. So there is one more cancellation. So we have 12 times 5 over 1, which is 60. So here is what we think at this point. We found that the side labeled by x here is 25. The side labeled as y is, we found it to be 144. And if you look at our picture, if our picture was reasonable, the numbers are reasonable. 25 is much smaller than 144. That's kind of comforting. And the altitude that we, we denoted by z turned out to be 60. Z is 60. We can check uh, via the Pythagorean theorem, but let us notice something here. 25 and 60 and 65, those three numbers are all divisible by 5, right? So if I list them in order, 25, 60, and 65, what happens if we divide all three by 5? We get 5, 12, 13. We know that that's, that's famous Pythagorean triple, so that checks out. That is a right triangle. And because they should be similar, if we list these other three, 60, 144, and 156, that should be the same. 
Now remember, 156 was 13 times 12. So if we want to divide so that this is 13, we need to divide all three numbers by 12. And that will work because 60 divided by 12 is 5. 144 divided by 12 is 12. So we get, again, the 5, 12, 13. And that should be true for the original triangle. If the shortest one is playing the role of 5, then the multiplying factor is 13 because 5 times 13 is 65. So if you think that we have 5, 12, 13, if we multiply these three numbers each by 13, we get 65 here, 156 here, and 169 there. So these three um, triangles are all similar to each other and they're all, all of them are um, very convincing right triangles. So our solution is 25, 60, and 144. Thank you for watching.